And hello everybody, Dragon47 here. How is it going with absolutely all of you guys today? I am really glad to be not necessarily live, but live once again to be able to bring you a lovely, lovely PvP guide to the Pokemon Go Fest 2024 Global. I'm super excited. The date will be July 13th and 14th for 2024. This will be a PvP exclusive guide. As per usual, I can give you guys tips for stuff that you will want to catch other than PvP, but I'm not going to go as in-depth into it as I will with the rest of the Pokemon. You guys should already know the drill by now. And last but never the least, I will not be covering the in-person big events this is specifically global again most people know me by being the budget guy playing on a budget not spending a whole lot of money on this game just doing the cool free stuff for ultra league and great league so without further ado let's dive straight on into this guide let's give you all the information that you're going to need to know and let's talk about other things to keep into consideration while you're PvP hunting for this event. So there will be over 70 Pokemon that will appear during this event. Again, this is a two-day long event, so be prepared to take work off, do whatever you need to do to get both of these days. This is a feature highlight right here, is Marshadow, but we will get into that here momentarily. That'll be something that we'll cover here in a little bit. So we're going to have a two-day long event, like I said, Saturday and Sunday. And this will be a ho habitat rotation event. So every hour, the habitats will rotate. And these are the Pokemon that you are going to want to be hunting during this habitat time. I'm sure that there is a bigger list somewhere, but I'm just going to go off the main stuff that they've given us here just because this is the best way that I can do it. Okay, so if, during the first hour of the habitat is the habitat Dawn Meadow. And here we have Pidgey, Pikachu wearing a Sun Crown, which will be a shiny exclusive. Hoot Hoot, Hoppip, Geoffrig. Wingle, Sn Snivy, <clears throat> excuse me, ugh, Cottony, Ducklet, Ferroseed, Axew, Galarian, Stunfisk, Heatmore, and Inkay. Okay, out of this list, out the gate, I'm gonna go with Pidgey. Pidgey is, like, the best thing ever to hunt, like, in general. You always can never have, you can never not have enough Pidgey. <laughs> it's the truth. And the reason for this is, is because Pidgey not only evolves into Pidgeot, which is a Mega, which is super helpful as a Mega normal type and flying Pokemon, but Pidgeot is also good in exclusive specialty cups for the Great League, and the Hundo, believe it or not, is actually good, almost maxed out for the Ultra League. That is the IVs you want for Ultra League, is a Hundo Pidgeot. So be sure to run out there and capture all those Pidgeots that you can see. Also, they're like super easy XP fodder to just evolve over and over and over again with a lucky egg during a two times evolve event. So filling your bag with a bunch of Pidgey is the best way to go to just get insta XP. Uh, Hoot Hoot and Wingle for Pelipper and Noctowl. For both reasons, um, Great League. Noctowl isn't quite as good as it used to be. Pelipper is still pretty good and Pelipper has a lot of unique puffs, uh, spots in specialty cups where it could be really really good noctowl is also kind of in that same boat it did get nerfed like three or four seasons back now but there's easily room for noctowl to be good again so make sure to pick yourself up a few hop Ip is for jump pluff jump pluff is okay i'm not going to say it's a super super great option snivy get your superior i will be hunting the crap out of snivy when it comes back I need a superior for my roster. Superior is so, so good with the flying type coverage and the plant type. And it's just a good, strong, bulky Pokemon in general. Uh, Ducklet is a little cup monster. Absolutely pick up Ducklets for your little cup. Um, Galarian Stunfisk, again, another great league staple. Can be kind of good in Ultra League, but honestly, Registeel is just better. Um, but can be a really, really good Pokemon to add. Plus, it's hard to get this Pokemon... With PvP IVs, mainly because the Galarians and the Hisuians or whatnot usually only come from 7km eggs. So make sure to go out hunting your Galarian Stunfisk. Ferrisee, the evolution of that Ferro Thorn is okay in certain specialty cups. And that goes same for Inkay, evolving into Malmar, which is okay for some specialty cups. Cottony evolves into Whimsicott, which is again good for specialty cups. There's just a lot of good Pokemon, honestly, in the Don Meadow. Shining Day, all right. So this one, we're going to see Charmander, Dratini, Sunkern, Stun, Dunsparce. Blech. 
Soul Rock, Suey and Sneasel. I'm sorry, everyone. I'm getting these names all wrong. Badu, Helioptile, Tyrant, Dedene, Young Goose, Fomantis, and Jang Moho. Okay, so the big one here for sure is the shiny release of Jang Moho. That is really sick and really good because getting Jang Moho for PvP is going to be big because uh, just a good Pokemon in general. Um, Charmander? Shadow Charizard is infinitely better, but if you don't have that, regular Charizard can do. Uh, Charizard is particularly good in the Ultra League, so make sure to look for your Ultra League PvP IV. Charmanders, Dratini, Dragonair is a super solid Pokemon. Again, another one you want Shadow, preferably, but Dratini can evolve into Dragonite, which is amazing in the Master League. And Dragonair is actually really good in the current Great League. Uh, Dunsparce can be okay in the Great League in certain specialty cups. Hisuian Sneasel is, again, a unique one. Not necessarily good in too, too much, but the Shadow is... The Shadow Sneasler is considered really good in Ultra League, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for that. Get candies and stuff for that if possible. Dedene is good in certain Great League specialty cups. That goes same for Helioptile, can go for Heliosk, except that one is good for specific Ultra League moments. And Fomantis can turn into Lorantis, which is okay in Great League. And Jigmo, obviously, is a great one to hunt because not only is it a more of a rare Pokemon, but this Pokemon in general is just really good for Great League. Like, kamo and the previous evolution of that can be good for Specialty Cups as well. <laughs> Next habitat is the Creeping Dusk habitat. We get Pikachu wearing a Moon Tiara this time. Eevee, Spinarak, Volbeat, Gibble, Illuminis, Emolga, Venipede, Litwick, Golette, Durant, Esper, Phantom, Grubbin. Okay, so out of all of these, right out the bat, we're going to go with Eevee, because as I've said before, Umbreon is a super solid and strong Pokemon. Gibble, um, uh, I'm not going to say... Okay, Garch, not Garchomp, but Gabite is okay in very, very certain specific... Uh, special cups, so that's something to kind of keep your eye out for. Garchomp has a very, very good Mega, and Garchomp is okay in the Master League. Not really much to say about poor Garchomp over here. Not doing super hot. Emolga can be kind of hilarious in the Great League. Definitely worth picking one up, just because something to lab with. Golet into Golurk. Shadow Golurk and regular Golurk were both really, really good in the Halloween Cup. Highly suggest it. Litwick goes into Chandelure. Again, top Fire-type, Raid-type attacker. That's budget, obviously. Phantom for Trevenant. Trevenant, really, really good in the Great League and semi-good in the Ultra League as well. Um, mainly, mainly Great League Trevenant. And Trevenant, this meta, I think, is actually even stronger than before. Definitely worth picking yourself up one. And Grubbin for that legendary Charger Bug, which is amazing in the Great League. You can't go wrong with a Charger Bug in the Great League. He's just so good. Even this meta, he's actually just insane. Definitely keep your eyes peeled for that one. And the final habitat is the Darkest Night habitat. And this is going to include Alolan Ratatata. Rattata, yes, Rattata. Gligar, Teddy Ursa, Sneasel, Mudkip, Carvana, Dino, Lunatone, Binacle, Amora, Carbink, Crabrawler, and Morlol. Okay, out of all of these, the one that you're definitely going to want to hunt the number one amount and the most is that Gligar. If you still don't have a Gligar for Great League, you need to be hunting this. I cannot stress enough. You need to be getting your hands on a PvP Gligar because he is so, so good. <laughs> Like, until they finally nerf his moveset. I know this season he's a little bit wonky because there's so much water in meta right now. And he kind of gets clapped up by a lot of the water types. But he destroys everything else. And for that reason alone, that makes him really, really good. Teddy Ursa and Ursaluna, again, big Pokemon, really unique, kind of okay in the Master League. We got Master Premier League coming up, so Ursaluna will be really good for that. Definitely worth picking up that. Sneasel, good to get candies for Shadow Weavile, which is a top ice-type raid attacker. Dino, this is a good one. Um, Zwellius is great in the Great League, and Hydreigon is all right in the Master League. Definitely get yourself a PvP Zwellius, although I do personally think Guzzlord is a bit better. Zwellius is uh, another option that you could go. Mudkip, Swampert is so OP. <laughs> Hydro Cannon spam Swampert with that bulk is just so, 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 so good. 
definitely pick one of these up for Great League if you haven't already. Some people will argue the Shadow is better, but I've seen cases made for both. So definitely get your PvP IV Mudkip. That's something I will definitely be hunting as well. Amora into Amoris, definitely good in the Ultra League. Has some play in the Great League as well. Can be worth it. Finally, Carbink. Carbink being just Carbink and being one of the best tanks in the Great League even to this day. Again, harder to run Carbink with all the water types running around. But that doesn't stop it all of the time. Sometimes its bulk is just too much and it doesn't matter. Gotta watch out for those Empoleon gamers, though. And that pretty much should cover all of the wild Pokemon spawns. There, I know there was a lot to cover here, but that's just because there was so much of the Pokemon that are there. So upgrading your Go experience. This is kind of one of those events where it's like you can play for free. But you're going to miss out on a lot of content if you don't pay for the tickets. And that's what I kind of hate more about the Go Fest is like... The Go Tour, you don't really have to pay for any tickets, right? And you're going to be golden, good as gold. But for the Go Fests, you pretty much do have to pay for tickets to get the max benefits out of everything. You can go full budget and go without, which I totally 100% respect. But if you do get the tickets, you get a lot of these specific exclusive things. And as for Sunday, you get the exact same stuff during Saturday. So the bonuses and features, uh, let's see here. There will be one hour lures, field research will be themed around different habitats, and there will be a lot of surprise encounters with snapshots. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's talk about this guy, Marshadow. He is the mythical that will be locked behind a ticket that you can use to go get him during the event. Last time I had some of these tickets expire on me, so make sure that if you do pay for these tickets... Make sure to finish them. Do not let them sit. Essentially, if you're wondering what Marshadow is, um, especially coming from somebody like me who's not really used to seeing newer Pokemon like from the Scarlet and Violet or whatever universe it comes from, this is essentially the upgraded Annihilate. This thing is going to have a larger CP gap than Annihilate, and it is a dual ghost and fighting type. So this thing's already good just based off of its typings, and I've seen its moveset and what it could potentially could learn. This could be a very, very solid and strong Pokemon. Definitely could be worth investing your rare candies into, could be a very strong Master League option. We'll probably replace um, Annihilate entirely in the Master League with this thing, more than likely. Uh, global challenges. We all have to work together during specific hours to do specific, um, or ticket holding traders will be able to complete a specific challenge. If they complete it, you get a special bonus during the hour. Um, again, that's only related to the ticket people. Incense encounters. Okay, so... For ticket holders, if you use an incense, you'll be able to encounter all of these Pokemon. You get all of the unknowns, and then you get one extra strange um, Pokemon per each one. So at the start of the day, you get Maractus, which is another regional Pokemon. During Shiny Day, you get Corsola, which is the shiny debut of this thing. This thing is a very unique Pokemon. It is region locked, and the shiny for it is considered to be rather rare. So that's something very interesting to go after. Creeping Dusk will get you a Rock Rough, which is honestly not super great, but you get all the unknowns as well. And then finally, the Darkest Night gives you all the unknowns and Vullaby. And for those of you who don't know, Vullaby evolves into Mandibuzz, and Mandibuzz is a really, really good Great League bulky Pokemon that is good for not only open Great League, but for a lot of specialty cups as well. Might like that's the one reason I might even consider getting the ticket is just because Vullaby is on this list. That and I don't know when I'll see Corsola ever again, but yeah, essentially, I'm just kind of looking at this thinking I'm not a fan of the 15 ticket dollar ticket, but you lose out on a lot of value if you don't. Um, exclusive bonuses you get, you know, increased chances of encountering any Pokemon, you get up to six special trades. Um, you get up to nine free raid passes for spinning photo discs at gyms. There are special themed 70 kilometer eggs. I'm not going to go over those in this video. You'll have to find someone else. Um, there will be more obviously coming out in this that we'll have to learn. Like, we don't know what the raids are. We don't know what the special eggs look like. We kind of don't know anything as of yet, but maybe I'll cover that. Maybe I won't. I'm not really into all that, as I've said multiple times. I'm just kind of here for the wild spawns, so I figure I might as well just do this now. Yep, the ticket is exactly 15 bucks. You can buy it early to get unique bonuses. Uh, let's see here. Yep, yeah, 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 extra bonuses. Two ways to purchase. You can go to the Go Web Store, or you can go to the in-game shop to get them. And that pretty much covers it. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not going to cover all of the bonuses as a lot of them are very niche. Usually them they're like special research stuff and things that give you extra things before the actual event starts. But again, 
not really what the focus of this video is. So, thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope this guide was super duper helpful for you. Be sure to look at all of these Pokemon and set out your shopping lists. Get all of your stuff together to, ch you know, j just get your bags together. Get your items taken care of get your in real life stuff taken care of make sure your phones are charged make sure you got your battery packs make sure you're drinking plenty of water and hydrating fluids make sure that you have all of this stuff you know just done and prepped and set in advance again this go fest is a bit earlier i feel than last time but maybe that's a good thing everybody thank you again once again i will see you all in the next video have a great day